Hey guys, I hope you're well and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to take you along with me so you can see what sorts of things I get up to as a junior doctor working in London. I'm a paediatrics trainee which means I am specialising to be a paediatrician and I'm in the first year of my training so I'm really junior but I'm six months in and I've been loving it so far. Today I'm working a shift that's 2pm until 10pm so I'm going to take you along with me and show you what sorts of things I get up to before work, during work and after work. When I'm on these shifts that start late in the afternoon, I like to have a really chilled morning and often I don't set an alarm so I can max out my sleep and sleep as much as possible. So that's what I did today. I woke up at about 10am naturally, feeling really well rested and ready for the day ahead. I've had a really chilled and slow morning. I read for about an hour in bed after I woke up. Then I got up, watered my plants, tidied my room, had a shower and washed my hair, which is one of my absolute favourite things to do. I don't know why, it's weird. Then I put my makeup on, got ready for the day and headed downstairs to have some breakfast. I also made my dinner for this evening because I'm going to be having dinner at work and there's rarely any good vegan options available. I'm going to head to work now, I've got a strong coffee in hand and I will see you there. I ended up spilling that strong coffee on my trousers during my drive to work. Luckily I needed to change into scrubs anyway, so I grabbed some medium scrubs from the cupboard and changed from my clothes with a simple jump. Ta-da! I tied my hair up, changed my mask, and headed to get handover from the morning team. I needed to do some blood tests and cannulas on some of my patients. In paediatrics, we have these teeny tiny blood bottles, these very cute teddy bear cannula stickers, and these teeny tiny yellow cannulas. Hey guys, I'm just on my break having some spaghetti, but I thought I'd check in with you. I'm having a really good day so far. It's been like a nice level of busy where there's always someone to see, but it's not crazy. Um, had some really nice patients, done some bloods and cannulas which have gone well and yeah, I've had a good day, I'm happy. I will tell you a bit more about my patients when I get home later tonight but I thought I would check in and say hi. It's the end of the day and I'm going to change into my clothes from my scrubs to my clothes. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about some of the types of patients I saw today. Today I was on PAU slash A&E. So PAU stands for Paediatric Assessment Unit and A&E is obviously Accident and Emergency. So basically seeing more acute conditions rather than any of the patients that are on the ward. Um, and that's why I was doing a weird 2 till 10 shift because it's kind of like a twilight shift covering the day team and the night team. I'm going to anonymise the patients a little and also change the histories a little just so that they're not recognisable and to respect patient confidentiality. But everything I tell you are very typical sorts of things that a patient might present with and you'll still learn a lot from the cases. The first patient I saw was a very typical paediatric presentation. It was a three-day-old baby with neonatal jaundice that had been referred in through the midwives. So we see this all the time. There's a very standard set of questions that need to be asked. And then most of the time we end up doing a blood test to check the bilirubin level in the baby. And then we plot this bilirubin level on a graph and check whether they need to be admitted or whether they can go home. So I did this for a baby. Luckily they were able to go home, which was really nice and the mum was really happy. I just loved seeing these babies, like seeing three-day-old babies and five-year-old babies is so nice. I feel so privileged. They're so cute. It's really nice time to be able to have a nice chat with the mum as well. Most of the time mums are with them rather than dads and just get to kind of play with and examine and see a really cute newborn baby. I then saw a five-year-old girl with a one-week history of hip pain. Now one of the most serious things we need to be thinking of in hip pain is, is it septic arthritis and is there risk of this joint being damaged? So I ended up doing bloods on this patient and also ordering some x-rays. Luckily they were all fine and we were able to discharge the patient home with some safety netting advice. Safety netting is a really big thing in paediatrics. It's basically saying at the moment, the clinical picture looks like your child as well, but things can change really quickly in children. And if anything changes or you're worried, always come back to us. We're always happy to re-review. And that's something I say to basically every patient I see because things can always change. The next patient I saw was a teenager who had taken an intentional paracetamol overdose. Unfortunately, this is something that we see quite a bit of in paediatrics. And unfortunately, it's happening more and more these days than, say, five years ago, which is really, really sad. So when I saw this patient, we look at it from a medical perspective and a psychiatric perspective. So from a medical perspective, how many tablets did they take? What symptoms are they having? Doing blood tests and deciding whether they need to start treatment for the paracetamol overdose. And then a psychiatric perspective means taking more of a psychiatric history, finding more about their mood and how they've been feeling, why they did it. Was it spur of the moment or what had it been planned? Just finding out much more detail about 
the overdose. And then we discuss this with CAMS, which is the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, and they review the patient and make a plan from there with regards to their psychiatric health. It's really sad seeing these patients and I try and have a good chat with them and talk about how they've been feeling, but sometimes it's been an ongoing thing for years and years. Um, but I do try and say what I can in a hope that it might help make a bit of a shift in the way that they're thinking and help contribute to their well-being. But it, it can be really tough seeing these kind of patients and thinking about what they're going through as well. And then the last patient I saw was a 12-year-old boy with abdominal pain. Now, one thing we're always thinking about when we see children with abdominal pain is, is it appendicitis? So thinking about things like, does it radiate to the right iliac fossa? Have they had a temperature? Are they vomiting? Those are all features that make it sound more and more like appendicitis. And then on examination, are they guarding? Are they peritonitic? This boy did have signs and symptoms of appendicitis. So I did some blood tests and his inflammatory markers and white cells were also raised. So I referred him to the surgical team who reviewed him and also agreed that they thought it might be appendicitis. So have admitted him to the ward and will be seen tomorrow and potentially have an appendicectomy tomorrow morning. So those are some of the sorts of patients I saw today. Um, we often see really random things, but I thought I'd tell you about very typical presentations and what we do about them. Um, I really love that PEDS is so varied. You see loads of different types of presentations. You see a huge age range. You get to meet lots of different types of patients and types of families. And you've always got your thinking cap on about what could be going on or is there anything else going on in the background. I find it really interesting, really entertaining, challenging and really fun as well. That's who I saw today. I'm going to head home now and chill out for the evening, do some admin that I need to do and unwind before my shift again tomorrow. I just got home and realised something really terrible. I've had this much water at work today. This much? So bad. Luckily, I had a whole big fat glass in the morning and I do that because I never know how much I'm going to drink at work. But this is my own fault. I wasn't too busy. I should have drunk more. Right, guys, it's almost midnight. I didn't go home from work until about half ten. And then I've just spent the evening unwinding, had some food. I'm catching up on some water and I FaceTime my family. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today as a day in the life as a paediatrics trainee. Do let me know in the comments what you enjoyed the most and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!